we are at a very interesting time in our society. In the past, we might have spoken about boys and girls, men and women, but now we talk about non-binary people. We might have spoken about straight people and gay people, but now we talk about pansexual, demisexual, genderqueer people, and a whole host of other terms. We are living in a time when there are so many people on this planet who no longer conform to the dominant gender norms. Now, you might be wondering, why? Why is this the case? And that's a really good question. Are we seeing a shift away from duality? Are souls choosing to be born to experience something other than being male, female, gay or straight? That's something for us to consider. But the truth is that you are born in a particular body. And because you're born in that particular body, a whole lot of assumptions are made about you. These gender norms control who we are. They say to us, because you are in a particular kind of body, you're allowed to behave a particular kind of way. And we see it in gender-based violence. I read a wonderful story a few years ago about a little boy who was gay. But he thought he was the only one. And as he went about his daily life at school, he kept looking at all these other people and thinking, but there's something wrong with me. I'm different. And one day, he got to meet his fairy godmother, and he was granted a wish. And he said to his fairy godmother, if there is one thing that you could do for me, it would be for me to know, is there anybody else like me? And the fairy godmother said, yes, of course. I will let you see who is blue like you. In other words, who is gay like you. The little boy went to school the next day, noticed that he himself had turned blue, and suddenly as he was walking around school began to see other blue people. Some of the people were very dark blue and some of them were very light blue. But to his amazement, the most masculine boy that he knew was blue. And this really surprised the little boy because he had been taught that if you are gay, then it must mean that you want to be a girl. And he had been taught that gay people were feminine and that lesbians were masculine. And so to his surprise, he realized that was a myth. I really believe that healers and teachers need to be sensitized to gender and sexual diversity, regardless of their own gender and sexual diversity. All of us need to understand the challenges that people face. If we are working as healers, particularly if we are working as people who dig into belief programs to find out what's going on, people who help others who have suffered trauma and discrimination and so on to heal. We need to have some understanding of the challenges that people face because they do not conform to a particular society's expectations, a particular society's cultural norms of the body and how the body is defined. It's really important to understand, for example, that people who do um, come from the LGBTQ uh, communities, experience more rejection, homelessness, harassment, prejudice, violence, bullying, higher rates of addiction, riskier behavior, suicide, lowered self-esteem. They tend to suffer much more from anxiety, and of course they feel unsafe. But also people who are assumed to be different, people who are assumed to be part of the LGBT community may experience the same challenges. Really, to be honest, homophobia, sexism and the patriarchy is affecting all of us. You might think that you are an ally. You might think that you are challenging sexism. But when you begin to unpack it, you might realize that through your own behaviors, through your own practices, You've been perpetuating 
sexism or gender inequalities. We have been taught for far too long that God is this male God. We have been taught for far too long that this difference in gender and sexual diversity goes against our religions. But if you are a theta healer and you are developing your connection with the Creator, do you see that everyone is a spark of the divine? All of us, regardless of our sexual orientation or our gender, is a spark of the divine. And as we said just now, could it be possible that a soul has chosen to incarnate in a particular body with a particular orientation or a particular um, gender for a particular reason? Is that potentially what could possibly be going on? I'm Eric Richardson, and I have developed four different modules which I'm offering this year to healers and to teachers who really see the value of working towards a more socially just society based in love and human rights. The modules in gender consciousness are really designed for people who want to perhaps unearth their own belief programs, begin to see how their belief programs have affected their attitudes and their behaviors, begin to see some of the unconscious biases that they have, and begin to use the healing techniques, the exercises, the practices, in order to change their own awareness and in order to shift their consciousness. These particular modules will really give healers and teachers a greater understanding of identity and the language, the terms that people are currently using, encouraging you really to begin to understand your own relationship with your own body, the ways in which you can help others who have struggled with who they are because of gender, sexual orientation, questioning, people who have found that they're not ex accepted and that they've had to hide something really important about their own identities. So ask yourself some questions. What are the values that are currently guiding your particular mission as a healer or a teacher? What are your beliefs when it comes to biological sex, gender, sexual orientation, sexual behavior? Is it okay, for example, for women to enjoy sex? It is, is it okay for women to be masculine? What is the connection between the divine masculine and the divine feminine and our experience of being in the body, in a particular body? Are you committed to serving everyone, including LGBTQ people? Theta healers could be part of the LGBT community. Where is your commitment easy to see? Where is your commitment hard to see? And what makes you feel uncomfortable about attending a master class about gender and sexual diversity? Obviously, we're heading towards instructor training, where I'm going to be training the instructors on how to offer gender sensitivity uh, and gender consciousness training to their own groups of people. But it's going to be really important that you join us for the modules as we go along. So as we come to the end of this brief talk, I would love you to let me know what you are doing to create a safe space in your practice. What are you doing to include people who come from uh, diverse gender and sexuality backgrounds? What are you doing to help people who've been affected by gender-based violence? So that would be awesome to hear from you.